So the next thing we're going to look at is the ability to read and write to files. This is obviously a very useful tool if you want to make games, you want to make save files, or if you want to make a standard application, you just need to be able to record your progress so far. Any any program such as like Word or, off, or uh, Excel or anything like that is going to require something like this. So we're going to figure out how to do this ourselves today. And to get this to get this ball going, we got to really realize that there is a lot of steps, a lot of pieces to this puzzle. So we're going to break these down and do one by one in a number of modules. And uh, to start out with, first thing you need to realize is that pretty much any time you're going to be dealing with file input output, you're going to need to use a library called using system io. IO standing for input output of course. So we're going to need that for for pretty much all of our uh, modules and anytime you want to read and write to a file. So make sure you have that in there. What I'm going to work on first here to show you is how to actually get the path of the file that you want to read or write to. And there's a lot of different ways to do this and it depends on what exactly you are doing uh, or what type of uh, program you're writing that's going to dictate how you're going to do this. So if you're doing a console program versus a Windows form program versus an XNA program, there are different ways of handling this type of thing. So I'm going to show you three. And the first one I'm going to show you is your standard Microsoft Word or Microsoft uh, Windows type of method where you have your open file dialog box. Typically speaking, if I hit file open even on this program, file open, it opens up this open file dialog box and it allows me to search and scan and try and find the file that I want. And you'll see that it allows, it allows me to set up filters so it'll only find files of certain types and whatnot. Um, we're going to figure out how to do that ourselves right now. So going to the designer, I've already set this up a little bit. I've added a couple buttons, an open button, a save button, and a path label. And this path label eventually will display the path that we find whatever file or whatever directory it is that we're trying to get to. Now, in any program, uh, you, want this, you want this path to be um, typically a relative path, which means like it's relative to where the running program exists, except for the fact if uh, you're actually getting the user to browse and find the file, then it's going to be an exact location. Um, so and that's going to be the case when we use this open file dialog and save file dialog. And what these are, are essentially pop-up windows that allow us to browse and scan and find the files that we're looking for. So they are under, oops, sorry, they are under um, dialogs. Click on dialogs. You'll see an open file dialog and a save file dialog. They essentially work the same way by letting you browse and find the find the directory you want, but they have a little bit of extra functionality. For example, the save file dialog, via file dialog will verify that you want to save over a file if you actually choose a file that currently exists, that kind of thing. So I've already taken the liberty of adding both an open file dialog and a save file dialog on here. And I've given the name OFD, that's our prefix, and SFD for the two different types of dialogs. Looking at their properties, let me get this going, of the open file dialog, um, essentially, uh, other than the name, you're not really going to change a lot except for the filter. We scroll down and we find the filter, sorry, right here. If I select this, it'll give me instructions on how to actually set this up. Essentially, I give a description of the file and then a vertical bar followed by um, how to actually find that. That star means that any name will go there. All right, and then it has to end in .text. Other than that, it's pretty much as normal. You can give it a starting file name if you'd like. Um, this usually isn't useful in an open file dialog, but it is useful in a save file dialog, which is exactly what I've done. So in save file dialog, I've actually given it a, a save file of my file. Of course, the user still has the ability to change this. Now, going back into the code, um, the code is set up under the save button. So right now, I'm going to use this save file dialog. Um, I'll get into more detail exactly how we're going to do this in a second, but first thing we need to set up is we need to, when the user clicks the save button, we need to open up that save file dialog. Uh, so we do this by typing sfd file finder dot show dialog. Now this will actually return a value. It'll return what button the user pressed 
to exit that to exit that uh, dialog box. So if they click the X in the corner, if they click cancel, or if they clicked OK. Um, if they, we only care if they clicked OK because if they didn't do that, then we're not actually going to try and save anything. So I need to record the results of this um, return value so I can actually compare against it and decide whether I should continue and try and get the path or not. So I can actually do that. The file or the data type that it returns is something called a dialog result. I'm just going to call this result. Oops. So you can see that dialog result result equals the save file dialog dot show dialog. So if I were to run this right now, it would run and then it would store the result. Um, if I did the full thing, it would return a value of dialog result dot OK, as in the OK button. Now, of course, that's the only time I'm ever actually going to try and get the file path. So I'm going to do a quick little if statement that says if result equals dialog result dot OK. That is the only time I'm ever actually going to try and get the file path. And now I'm going to, need to, going to need to store that file path so I can actually use that within my program. So I can do something like this. String file path. And now I'm going to store it. Well, let's give it a starting value of quote quote just to be just have this style here. Um, now inside here, I'm just going to say file path equals that dialog result, the save file dialog file, or file finder, right here, sorry, SFD file finder dot file name. And that will actually display, or that will actually record what we have. So just to demonstrate this, let's change the label. The label path dot text equal to file path. Now if I run my program, nothing here, we'll hit save. And I'll just browse down and uh, choose a, any file on my desktop. Doesn't matter. You notice that it's just opening up the TXT files as we dictated. Yes, I want to replace it, and it's going to show me the exact path right here, right up to the file itself. I'm done with that now. So this actually gave me the whole file path. So this is actually pretty useful. I can use this for my future endeavors. The open file dialog works exactly the same way no difference whatsoever it's going to return a dialog result we're only going to try and get the file path if we have that valid result from there we can continue on to save or open our or save or open our file we'll get into that in future discussions the next thing i want to show you is another way of getting the file path so let's just comment out this stuff for now i'm just going to comment this out oops i did not do that one i have one button we're just going to comment that out. And another option to get the file path, string file path. If we're using a Windows Forms program, we can actually just type in application startup path. And this is typically fairly safe, um, but it won't, it can actually cause problems if you're using it in conjunction. Oops. If you're using it in conjunction with open file dialogs and everything like that, um, it can cause some problems. Um, but it's usually fairly safe for the most part when you're using a Windows Forms program and you shouldn't run into too many problems. Um, so that is one method. And again, if I were to run this program, we would actually get, I'm just going to click the save button, and we will get the directory right to the debug folder. That is where the exe file for this uh, program that I'm currently running exists and that's where we should expect to see all of our files that we plan on saving or loading. Okay now if they're in other directories we can then adjust from there but for the most part that's exactly what it's going to be. That gets us our root file path, the path to the executable location. Now that is one method. There is another method. So again let's comment out this method and go for method three. Now this third method is the most uh, reliable method. Um, it takes a little bit more work, but it is still uh, very, very useful. And you can use this in other um, types of programs like XNA and whatnot. Uh, so we're going in, create a string file path. And we're gonna start off by getting something a little different this time. This one's a little bit more complex, so try and keep up. We hit system dot reflection, 
And then I'm going to hit the assembly. Dot get executing assembly dot code base. Essentially what this will get me is very something very similar to what application dot startup path gives me, but it has a little bit of extra stuff at both the beginning of the beginning and the end. So if I were to run this right now, you'll see exactly what it will give me. I hit save, and you see me it gives me all these this file colon slash 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 c, and at the very end will actually give me some more stuff that we can't actually see because it doesn't show up because this window is not big enough. What we want to do is trim off that stuff, so we need to do a few more steps, two more steps exactly. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this big mess of a file path and I'm going to do a little bit of manipulation. So I'm going to say file path equals path dot get directory name file path. So I'm going to take the current file path and I'm going to get just the directory name of this. So that what that's going to do is it's going to eliminate the actual file that's at the end of the current file path. So if I were to run this, you'll see the exact same thing as you saw before because it was cut off at the end. But now I'm going to get cut off that piece at the very beginning, the file colon slash 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 slash. To do this, we're just going to say file path equals file path. So we're manipulating the current file path and storing it back in the file path variable. Substring bracket six. What this is going to do essentially is it's going to cut off the first six characters and just ignore them. So now if we run our program, we're going to end up with exactly what we're looking for. The end has been cut off and we have what we need. Okay, and just to show you this in a little bit bigger form so you can actually see a little bit more of it. Um, so we have the string file path equals system.reflection.assembly.executing.getExecutingAssembly.codeBase we then cut off the end by using path .get directory name file path, and then we cut off the beginning by just using the substring method, which you've all seen before. And that is how we can get our file paths.